What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video on Lex Alexis. Today is a crucial video because today I am releasing my predictions of the Premier League 22-23 season. I am revealing what I think the table is going to look like. I tell you what, I spent a long time on making these tables and this was one of the longest times I've made making the table. And I've counted about 10 different tables I've made. Finally, I've gone for one which I can kind of be content releasing to you guys. It's been so difficult making the tables so if you don't agree with it that's absolutely fine that's what the comments are there for please do comment down below what you think the table's going to look like how many of the newly promoted teams or the championship do you think will survive and what do you think the top six is going to be i'll be very interested to know all of those things in the comments down below i'm also doing the fantasy league in terms of the premier league that will be in one of the top links in the descriptions down below and you'll not only have a link to automatically join or you can actually use the code that i've provided in the description as well you can also join that way as well we've already got many members so let the fun and games both begin with that front but in terms of this video if you guys enjoyed it please give the video a like it does tremendously help the channel please do hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content it really does help the growth of this channel and please also share the channel too that really helps the growth of this channel too but without any further ado let's start predicting this premier league table so 20th place in the table for me is bournemouth like what most predictors are predicting unfortunately i just don't think the squad is prepared enough. I think out of the three newly promoted teams, you know, Bournemouth have not really been busy. And I do think out of the three newly promoted teams, Bournemouth really needed to try and make a big overhaul if they wanted to compete for me. You know, despite having a great unbeaten run at the start of the season, they did tell off a little bit. And whilst they managed to hold their nerve a little bit in the final couple of games, cracks were still showing about in terms of their performances. They had to rely on Kiefer Moore. You know, a player that they didn't even have at the start of the season to eventually get enough points to secure promotion in the end. And for me, I just think Scott Parker still, as a Premier League manager, a bit unproven for me. Transfers I got in Tavernier and Rothwell could be decent, great championship players, but whether they're going to cut in the Prem, I couldn't honestly tell you. So for me, I don't have a lot of confidence in Bournemouth, sadly, but I really hope they do prove me wrong. Coming in at 19th place, which I think is a very unpopular pick, but I've gone for Everton. And I think a lot of people think, oh, Everton can't go down, it's Everton. But I'm just trying to forget, you know, for the fact that Everton have not been relegated in the modern Premier League era. I'm just trying to look at their squad. And I've got to say, losing Richarlison is a big hole in their squad that they've got to try and fill. And for me, they've not done it so far. Now, I can be proven wrong if Everton actually managed to sign a striker, which they have been linked to a handful of attacking players. But as of right now, I am really not excited seeing Everton this year. Frank Lampard also, as a Premier League manager, personally, and I, I can't believe I'm saying, but I think he's also unproven as a Premier League manager. He did get a lot out of the little in the Chelsea squad when things weren't going their way. But I do think he had some great backing there. And I think with Everton, if things don't work out, I don't think he'll be given too much time. And things could get really, really messy for Everton. So in terms of the risk that they have. I think they've just got a lot of risks this season. And if it pays off, it pays off. But if it doesn't, it really could see Everton, you know, on a one-way ticket down to the championship, which they definitely don't want to be, especially with the stadium coming up. So for me, 19th place. And that might definitely get some people talking. In terms of 18th place, the final relegation spot has gone to Fulham. A bit similar with Bournemouth. They really needed to invest. And they have invested a lot more for what Bournemouth have done, to be fair. I just think with the players they let go, I just think it was two really decent players that they let go in Jean-Michael Serri and Fabio Carvalho. They've tried to replace them with the likes of Polinia and Andres Pereira. But I think Andres Pereira especially, I don't know how good of a job he's going, he's going to be in terms of um, dictating that midfield. But the reason why I actually edged for them a little bit above Everton is actually I think they've got more good options. They've definitely done that with the transfers they made. Everton have barely made any signings. Fulham have made a lot more. And actually big money signings as well. So maybe a bit unproven in the Premier League. But definitely flair players. Which if they get given the right service. They can do really really well. i tell you one signing they made quite recently. Which I think is prem quality. Is Burn Leno their goalkeeper. If he can do as well as he did in his first couple of years at Arsenal. Then I think Villa have got a really good goalkeeper on their hands. So I do think there's positives there. And I think Marco Silva as a manager. I think is more equipped to try and make Fulham compete in the Premier League than Jokanovic and Parker was. I just think with the experience Parker Silva has, I think he could be one of the biggest reasons why Fulham do survive. But I just don't think they've got quite enough. I think they'll fall just short. And I'll tell you what, it was very close 
between Fulham and really up to 15th place, to be honest. It's really, really tight down there. In terms of 17th place, it's Leeds United. Now, I am not entirely sure on this because losing Rafinha and losing Calvin Phillips is two crucial players, almost ir irreplaceable for how important they were in that Leeds squad. But what Leeds have tried to do, do, to be fair, is that they've papered those cracks with new signings, which can have a point to prove and could be decent. Tyler Abdens, for instance, will be in the position of Calvin Phillips for sure. So I definitely think that Leeds have addressed the window much better than a lot of the teams down there in this part of the table. And I do think that might give them the edge in terms of the bottom three for the fact they've got more options. And if there's injury problems, as long as those players are signing are good quality, then I don't think Leeds are going to have too many problems with that. They just obviously got to work on their defence. But if I can get that sorted and they can defend as well as they did, you know, near the end of last season, then I think Leeds might squeak another season into the Premier League. But I tell you what, it's very, very risky. Coming out of 16th place on the table is Nottingham Forest. Now, for me, the big reason why I put Forest down here, which some people may be surprised that I'm not predicting them to finish any higher, it's really down to the fact that, yes, they made many signings. They lost a lot of players. They've lost 12 players and they managed to gain 13 players in. But... That's a lot of new feet to go in and to try and gel. Their pre-seasons have been a bit dodgy as well. I don't want to really base their position too much on the preseason, But it is a small indication that the signings do need a bit of time to get used to each other. But I do think Forrest may start slow. But I think they'll grow into the season. And I think Steve Cooper's a good enough manager to make them survive. I just think they've got to take baby steps from there. And I think potentially if they go through past the second season syndrome of next year, then I think Nottingham Forest can really start accelerating up the table. So I think this season's all about stability. And I think Nottingham Forest will just about get that. Coming up next on the table is Brentford. Now, Brentford was a team I moved everywhere. I had them down in 19th at one stage. But then they've been moving around because they've slowly but surely been starting to get more people into the door. Lewis Potter, I think, is exciting. Aaron Hickey, I also think, is a very decent signing that they made as well. And very recently, for I think, could be announced later today, or maybe it has already been announced, but I've not seen it. But Damsgaard looks like that he has signed an official agreement to join um, Brentford as well. So they're continuing this Danish model um, to gain these Danish international players. And I do think that is definitely going to be a good model for Brentford going forward. I think the reason why I'm not predicting Brentford any higher and not to kick on is the fact they've lost Christian Eriksen. I think it's a big part of their squad that they've lost. Having said that, though, I do think for the fact that they kept most of their players in as a whole, I think they'll still do OK. I just don't think they'll necessarily improve on what they managed to do last year. Coming up next to the table is Southampton. I mean, Southampton just tend to finish in that lower league mid-table position, don't they? they got a couple of decent players in. Bazuna, I think, will be a decent goalkeeper. Joe Rebo as well, formerly a Charlton player, but had a couple of years in Rangers and actually played a big part in that Rangers squad. So those two players are more intrigued than anything. They have had a lot of their players linked with moves away. Kyle Walker-Peters being one linked with Chelsea, bizarrely. But um, I do think as long as they keep most of their players in, Southampton should survive quite comfortably. I'd be a little bit shocked if Southampton do somehow find themselves in the predicament of relegation. They do go through these really good forms and then these poor forms. They're just a very inconsistent team, Southampton, and can be a team either on the money or really off it. So I think naturally both of those forms will take place and I think it'll just finish Southampton in a very underwhelming position in the table again. 13th place in the table is Wolves. Now, I think this period onwards was very difficult, but... Wolves, for me, I think they did a decent job with Bruno Lager, but I do think with the style of football that they play especially, I do think they do hold a big risk with the fact that they don't really attack the games that much. I do think they are a tough team to play up against, and they have made more defensive signings, for instance, getting Nathan Collins in from Burnley. But for me, what can be an issue for them is the lack of goals. I definitely think that was one of their biggest issues of last year. I think Wolves as a team had the most nil-nil draws, out of every team in the Premier League. So they're going to be quite careful with that and make sure they get that perfect balance. So if they struggle with that, they could, you know, definitely maybe draw too many games and potentially wouldn't finish too high up the table. But I do think it'll still be pretty comfortable territory for Wolves in the end. Top place is Brighton. Now, Brighton is very difficult to predict for me because they had a great season last year, actually finishing the top half of the Premier League for the first time in their history. So congratulations to Graham Potter and Brighton and Hove Albion. I do think there'll be a small drop-off. I do think 
A bit similar with Southampton, they go through these forms and if they go in a good form, Brighton are right on it and they actually do really play some great positive stuff there. But they've lost the Ives Bizuma to Spurs and it does look like that Chelsea are really looking likely to sign Mark Cucurella. So if they lose both of those players who were two really key players for Brighton last year, then I do think Brighton will definitely not click straight away. But they have made a handful of transfers and decent looking transfers in the end of it. So I do think Brighton will finish once again pretty comfortably. I think in this position of the table, it's just a comfortable finish, isn't it? 11 places, Crystal Palace. I think they'll kick on with Patrick Vieira, you know. I do think Patrick Vieira is a very underrated manager. And I think he's actually got a lot out of his Palace team. And I really like the approach they're going right now. I do think they've not signed many players in, but they didn't really need to. I think their midfield is always very good. And what I will say, I think their depth is really good right now. Yes, they lost Conor Gallagher unless he does go out on loan to them, you know, again this year. But I do think still as a whole with the players that they've got in permanently and they even having the additions, for instance, Sam Johnston as an option in goal as well. I do think Crystal Palace have got a lot of good options. And I think that is why I feel that they'll do the best of the rest in the bottom half. I think their squad edges it, but also I think the players that they can have and how versatile they are, I think they'll be the biggest X factor with Crystal Palace. So for me, I think Crystal Palace will have a decent season this year. 10 places Aston Villa. Transfer business wise, they're right up there in terms of even maybe the top four teams with the best transfer windows. They got their business early and because of this, They've now been able to integrate those players in. Camaro, a brilliant signing. Getting Diego Carlos as well for Sevilla, great signing as well. But one thing I do have a little bit of a doubt with Aston Villa is, you know, they're going to have to rely on the likes of Ollie Watkins again for goals there. Well, I think Ollie Watkins did okay, but I do think he could have more competition, which could egg him on a little bit. I think as a whole, I think Aston Villa will be... An inconsistent team, you know, it's going to be interesting because it's going to be difficult to predict how Steven Joe is going to do in his first full season as Aston Villa manager. But we can see the potential that this Villa squad has had, you know, when they managed to finish in the top half with Dean Smith. So I do think if Steven Joe just can play his cards right, I think it'll be a decent season for Aston Villa. Next in my table in ninth place is Leicester City. Leicester is also a peculiar one because Leicester. With the squad that they got, you would think they'd be right up there in top seven or top six. They've not got European competition either, I believe either. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I don't think they actually qualified for Conference League because I think it was West Ham that actually took the Conference League space in the end of it. They may could have qualifiers, potentially. Having said that, though, I do think Leicester are going through a very peculiar stage right now. They've not made any transfers. They're the only team in the Premier League who've not made a single transfer and it does look like Kasper Schmeichel has been heavily linked away to join Nice as well. And are we now going to see the players starting to drop like flies in Leicester? And if they don't reinvest soon, it could make things quite difficult. But I feel like this is the last season with these current core group of players that Leicester could potentially attack things and Brendan Rodgers can get a tune out of them. So for me, I think he'll just finish just below you know, where they may want to be and in ninth place. I think injuries could play a problem and... I just think in general, the top eight are just a little bit more competitive than them right now. Eighth place for me, having said that, is Newcastle United, who are a new team entering that conversation there. They are under a new era right now with their new ownership, of course. And they have managed to make the money talk as well. They have splashed the cash and they've tried to get some new players in. Botman, I think, is decent. Target getting them permanently is good. Pope as a goalkeeper, I think, is really, really good as well. I do think those players have done well, but I would have expected Newcastle to actually make some more transfers. And I would have actually thought about Newcastle, you know, putting them higher up the table had they actually, you know, got more new players in that can definitely rival um, everyone in the first team. But for me, if they're keeping it out as it is and they're still keeping Eddie Howe in charge as well, I think he can get a decent tune out of him, but I think 8th place at best. I'd be very surprised if they finish top 6 for me now. Coming in at 7th place is West Ham, so I've been very boring and predicted the same top 6 for the top 6 there, although it was actually that top 6 um, last year, actually. So with West Ham, they actually made some really good signings. Skamaka, I think, is a great signing. Ariona as a goalkeeper is a decent um, pickup as well. I think the competition and, you know, the depth that they have 
with the Conference League, I think is really going to make things tricky for them. You know, if they did quite well, you know, to even cope with Europa League and this league form, and they were really close actually to securing that safe place in the end. But I do think if they do get an injury to some key players, I think it'll make things a little bit tricky there. And they did at times, you know, near the end of the season, West Ham especially, they started to drop down their form when they progressed really far in the Europa League. So I think that European competition is why I think West Ham will not finish top six. So now let's actually reveal the top six one by one. Sixth place for me is Manchester United. For me, I would have expected Manchester United to make a couple more signings than what they have done. They have been linked with a handful of players. The signings they have got in are decent, Malassia, Lissandra Martinez, and especially Christian Eriksen. But are they going to get a defensive midfielder? That's the million dollar question. If they're going to stick with McFred again, I just don't think it's going to be a positive season now. I do think the midfield was their problematic area. And, I, you know, apart from Eriksen, I don't really see anyone, you know, completely stepping up and changing what the main problem was with Manchester United last year. So... That does surprise me, sadly. I think the De Jong saga has made things very, very unique and complicated for Man United there. So that saga could, in itself could really determine Manchester United's position. And I think they're in the lower end of that position. And hence why I think they're going to finish the lowest out of the top six clubs. Fifth place, I'm going to actually edge Arsenal. This was really close between fifth and fourth. I'm going to edge Arsenal as fifth. I just think down to the manager, and it sounds harsh for me to say that, but I think Mikel Arteta, as a manager, cannot necessarily get a consistent Arsenal team that would be in the top four. I do think the transfers they've made, they've definitely made some intent Arsenal that they definitely want to be in the top four. Getting Gabriel Jesus especially, I think will be an alright transfer. I don't think it's going to necessarily um, shock the world, but... I think for Arsenal, I think he'll do quite well. Zinchenko as well from City, I think, will be a decent signing as well. Marquinhos has been a decent signing as well. So, as a whole, I think that Arsenal have improved. But I just think if they do have an injury to some really key players, especially their attacking players, I think they're going to struggle. What was really telling about last season was how comfortable they had top four in their hands and they threw it away so easily. And I do think it's a mentality problem. And unless something drastically happens, I think Arsenal will just function the exact same way, unfortunately, for them. So, I'm going to predict them in fifth. Fourth place is Chelsea. Now, this is just down to me assuming that Chelsea are going to make more signings. Because based on our squad right now, I probably wouldn't even put us above Man United, honestly. But right now, I am assuming, because we are linked with so many players right now, and I know we've not had a great track record of managing to get players in Barcelona, nicking in a lot of our players, of course, which I'm not bitter about. You know, I'm not too surprised, unfortunately, at, at this rate. But right now, I'm just assuming that, you know, for so far, you know, we set the bar high, getting Koulibaly and Raheem Sterling in, you know, a wide attacking player and a defender there. And we are looking to get more defensive players in, you know, especially because we did lose a lot of defensive players, Christensen and Rudiger leaving as well. I'm a bit surprised that Skudoueta is still in the club, to be honest. I thought he'd join Barcelona, but... Clearly he didn't. We're getting more defenders in, or we're planning to, I should put in quotes. And I think we're going to stick with our midfield, and we're definitely going to get, I think, one um, striker as well. So things are going to make things quite interesting for Chelsea. It looks like we may look at Havertz as being the, you know, the go-to guy for, to get goals, which makes me a little bit nervous, I won't lie. So right now, I'll say Chelsea fourth, but in the back of my mind, I really could be clouded by my own judgment as a fan there. Third place is Spurs. I think them as a club are improving. I think Conte has made the right moves in the window there. Getting Richarlison, Basuma from Premier League rivals and strengthening their team right now. I definitely think the signings he made in the January window last year really took Spurs up a level. Kuluzeski and Ben Tanker to name two examples of those. They've even got some players which I don't necessarily think will play too many games but good experienced winners like Ivan Perisic for instance. So I do think Conte's got the system right so far. And I do think Spurs are now ahead of Chelsea based on not only their positive momentum, but how much they've improved their squad and how they're settling into Conte. So I think Spurs will be the best of the rest. But I just don't think anyone's going to get anywhere close to Liverpool and City. I think they're in a cult of their own competition right now. For me, second place is going to the Community Shield winners, Liverpool. And Man City is going first. Liverpool, I think, will be okay. I do think, though, losing Mane, I think, is going to make things quite interesting. Nunez did manage to score for Liverpool in the Community Shield, 
but I don't necessarily see him going to score the same types of numbers that Mane scored, where he was crucial at times in that Liverpool squad there. They definitely have all the right options there. I just personally think Liverpool as a whole, especially if they lose some um, defensive players due to injury, I think they can struggle with that. Whereas Man City, I think on depth level, I just think they just trounce any team in the Premier League. A little bit unfair, really, but they've got great options in their back line. They've got great options in their midfield, and they've even bolstered their attacking options. They can even let go of Jesus because they've now got Erling Haaland in, which I think, oh, I don't know how I feel about Haaland in the Premier League. I, You know, he really should aim for at least 15 goals I find but if he doesn't get any more for 15 goals I think it'll be a disappointing season for Haaland and I feel like he knows that he's really got to give Manchester City you know the win he'll be the main guy that they'll be relying on there so I'm going to be interested to see how he goes with that pressure but as a whole I think just with squad depth the fact that they added the likes of Calvin Phillips you know just some great great business for Manchester City and I think they'll win the Premier League again so guys, and the left hand side of me is my Premier League table. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. As I said previously, please make your Premier League tables as well. I'll be very interested to see them. Tomorrow, guys, I'll be releasing my predictions for the first game week of the Premier League. So make sure you tune in for that because there will be a predictions league as well. So make sure you leave your comments for them as well. But that'll wrap it up for today's video at least. Please give the video a like if you just trying to see on the channel. Please do hit the subscribe button. It really helps to grow this channel. And please also share the channel too. That really helps too. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary. It's only in this video. As always, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, everyone.